is it possible that there's other intelligent alien civilizations out there that are operating on a different membrane? It's, it's, this is a bit of an out there question, but I, I ask it more kind of seriously. Like, is it possible, do you think, from a physics perspective, to exist on a slice of uh, what the universe is capable of? I think it is certainly mathematically possible on paper to imagine a higher dimensional universe with more than one membrane. And if things are mathematically possible, I often wonder if nature will try it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, just how people get into the, the strange territory of talking about a multiverse. Because if you start to say, one of the aspirations was in the same way that we identified the law of electroweak theory of matter, that it was a single description and exactly um, landed on the description that matched observations, people were hoping the same thing would happen for a kind of theory that also incorporated gravity. There would be this one beautiful law, but instead they got a proliferation, all of which did okay or did equally badly. Um, they suddenly had trouble finding, not only finding a single one, but sort of that would just beg a new question, which is, well, why that one? And if if nature can do something, won't she do anything she can try? <laughs> And so maybe we really are just one example in an infinite sea of possible universes with slightly different laws of physics. So if I can do some of these things on paper, like imagine a higher dimensional space in which I'm confined to a brain and there's another brain or maybe a whole array of them, maybe nature's tried that out somewhere. Maybe that's been tried out here. Um, and then, yes, is it possible that there's life and civilizations on those other brains? Yeah, but we can't communicate with them. They'd be like in a shadow space. Can you seriously say we can't communicate with them? Well, Wait, so I, it's, no, it's... that's fair. I, there, I'm limited in my communication because right. I'm glued to the brain, but some things can move. We call the bulk through the bulk. Gravity, for instance, a gravitational wave. So I could design a gravitational communicator communication mm. system. Yeah. And I could send gravitational waves through the bulk. And how SETI's doing with light into space, I could um, send signals into the bulk, nice. telling them where we are and what we do and of course, singing songs. <laughs> sending gravitational waves is very expensive. We don't know how to Very expensive, very hard to localize. They tend to be long wavelength and very hard to do. A lot of energy moving around. A lot around. of energy. <laughs> uh, so is it possible that the membranes are quote unquote hairy in other ways, like some kind of weird It is possible that there's other thing. things that live in the bulk. I mean, last night I was calculating away, <laughs> <laughs> okay, looking nice. at something that lives in the bulk. <laughs> okay, this is fascinating. So, I mean, okay, can we take a little bit more seriously about mm -hmm. the, the whole, when, when I look out there at the stars, mm -hmm. I, from a basic intuition, cannot possibly imagine there's not just alien civilizations everywhere. Yeah. Life is so damn good. Like you said, nature tries stuff out. Yeah. Nature's uh, an experimenter. <laughs> and I just can't, just basic sort of uh, observation, life, uh, you said uh, somewhere that you like extremophiles. Life oh, yeah. just <laughs> figures shit mm -hmm. out. Yeah. It just finds a way to survive. Now, there could be something magical about the origin of life, the first spark, but like I can't even see that. It's just over and over and over. I bet, actually, once once the story is fully told and figured out, life originated on Earth almost right away and did that mm -hmm. so like billions of times uh, mm -hmm. in multiple places, just over and over and over and over. Uh, that seems to be the thing that just, whatever is the life force behind this whole thing seems to uh seems to create life seems to be a, a creator of different sorts mm. Mm, yeah the, the the very from the very original primordial soup of things it just creates stuff so i just can't imagine but we don't see the aliens so right yeah we don't even have to go to something as crazy as extra dimensions and brain worlds and all of that what's happening right now in the past 30 years in astronomy looking at real objects is that the number of planets, exoplanets outside our solar system has absolutely proliferated. There are probably more planets in the Milky Way galaxy than there are stars. 
And now we have a real quandary. Not, I don't think it's a quandary. I think it's really exciting. <laughs> it becomes impossible. What you just said, I totally agree with. It becomes impossible to imagine that life was not sparked somewhere else in our Milky Way galaxy and maybe even in our local neighborhood of the Milky Way galaxy, maybe within a few hundred light years of the Milky of, of, of our solar system. So my, my, my gut says like some crazy amount of uh, solar systems have life, bacterial life somewhere at some point in their history had some bacterial type of life. Something like bacterial, maybe it's totally different kinds of life. Mm -hmm. So th then I'm just facing with the questions like why have we not clearly seen yeah. alien civilizations? And there, the answer, I, I just, I, I don't find any great filter answer convincing. There's just no way I can imagine an advanced alien civilization not avoiding its own destruction. I can see a lot of them getting into trouble. I can see how we humans are really like 50-50 here. <laughs> well, isn't that kind of appalling? I mean, just take that statement. We've only been around for like, I mean, a couple hundred thousand years tops, <laughs> you know? Um, that is not very long. And we're at a 50-50? I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's indisputable that we have created the means, at least potentially, for our own destruction. Will we learn from our mistakes? Will we uh, avert course and save ourselves? One hopes so, right? But, but even the concept that it's conceivable, whales have not invented a way to kill themselves, <laughs> to wipe out all whales and earth. <laughs> And life on Earth. <laughs> That's one way to see it, but I, I actually see it as a feature, not a bug, when you look at the entirety of the universe. Because uh, it does seem that the mechanism of evolution constantly creates... You want to operate on the verge of destruction, it seems like. I mean, the predator and prey dynamic is really effective at creating at accelerating evolution and development. It seems like us being able to destroy ourselves is a really powerful way to give us a chance to really get our shit together and to flourish, to develop, to innovate, to to uh, go out amongst the stars or 50-50, destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. But like, which I, I think me as a human is a horrible thing, but if there's a lot of other alien civilizations, that's a pretty cool thing. You want to give everybody nuclear weapons. Uh, half of them will figure it out, half of them won't. I mean, the ones you mean that everyone, out, all these civilizations. <laughs> all these civilizations. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that figure it out will figure out some incredible technologies about how to expand, how right. to develop, and all that right. kind of stuff. Right. You could use a kind of evolutionary Darwinian natural selection on that, where in survival isn't just in a harsh, naturally induced climate change, but is because of a nuclear holocaust. And so but and then and then something will will be created that is now impervious to that, that now knows how to survive. Yep, exactly. So why haven't we seen them? Right. Well, because that's a pretty big bar. So if you look at the, just to say, for comparison, dinosaurs, uh -huh. you know, 250 million years. I mean, maybe not very bright. <laughs> um, didn't invent fire. Didn't write sonnets. Yeah. They didn't contemplate the origin of the universe, but they, they lived. Mm -hmm. And um, in a benign situation without confronting their own demise at their own hands. Pause. <laughs> Hooves. Um, so it's just a sheer numbers game. That's a long time, 250 million years. I do think, though, that life can flourish without wanting to manipulate its environment. And that we do see many examples of species on Earth that are very long-lived, very, very long-lived, um, and have very different states of consciousness. They have the jellyfish does not even have a localized brain. Um, I don't think they have a heart or blood. I mean, they're really different from us. Okay, And that's what I think we have to start thinking about when we think about aliens. Those uh, species have lived for a very, very long time. They even show some evidence of immortality. You can wound one badly, and there are certain jellyfish that will go back into a kind of pre-state and start over. So I think we're very attached to imagining creatures like us that manipulate technology. Um, and, um, and I think we have to be way more imaginative uh, if we're going to really take seriously life in the universe. Yeah, they might not prioritize conquest mm -hmm. and expansion. Mm -hmm. They might not be violent. 
Mm -hmm. They might not be violent. <laughs> like us humans. <laughs> they might be solitary. They might not be social. They might not move in groups. They might not want to leave records. Um, uh, they might, again, not have a localized brain or have a completely different kind of nervous system. I think all we can say about life is it has something to do with moving electrons around. <laughs> and um, like neurologically, we move electrons through our nervous system. Our brain has electrical configurations. We metabolize food, and that has to do with uh, getting energy, electrical energy in some sense, out of um, what we're eating. And you know, we have organisms on the earth that can eat rocks. It's quite amazing. Minerals. I mean, talk about extremophiles. They can metabolize things that I would have thought uh, were impossible to metabolize. And so, again, I think we, we have to kind of open our minds to how strange that could be. Um, and how different from us. And we are the only example, even here on Earth, that that does manipulate its environment in that extreme a way. I mean, can you think of life as, because you said electrons, is, is there some degree of information processing required? So like, it does something interesting, in quotes, with information. I think there are arguments like that. Um, how entropy is changing from the beginning of the universe to today, how life uh, lowers entropy by organizing things, but it costs more as a whole system. So the whole entropy of the whole system goes up. But um, but of course, I, I organized things today and reduced the entropy of certain things in order to get up and get here. <laughs> um, and even having this conversation, organizing thoughts, um, out of the cloud of information, but it comes at the cost of the entire system increasing um, entropy. So I do think there's probably a very interesting way to talk about life in this way. I'm sure somebody has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It creates local pockets of low entropy, and then it, the the kind of mechanism, the kind of object, the kind of life form mm -hmm. that could do that probably can take you know, arbitrary forms. And mm -hmm. you could think now, if you could reduce it all to information, now you could start to think about physics. And in the realm of physics with, with the multiverse and all this kind of stuff, you could start to think about, okay, how do I detect those pockets of low entropy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, people have tried to make arguments like that. Like, can I look for entropic arguments that might suggest we've done this before? <laughs> the Big Bang has happened before. <laughs> so is it possible that there's some kind of physics explanation why we haven't seen the aliens? Like we said, membranes. I don't think membranes is going to explain why we don't see them in the Milky Way. I think that is just a problem we're stuck with. Whether or not there are extra dimensions or whether or not there's life in another membrane, um, I think we know that even just in our galaxy, which is a very small part of the universe, um, 300 billion stars, something like that, a whole kind of variety of possibilities to be explored by nature in the same way that we're describing it. And I think you're absolutely right. When when life was kicked off, first sparked here on Earth, it was voracious. Now, it took a really long time, though, to get to multicellularity. Yeah. I think that's interesting. That's weird. It's weird. It took a really, really long time to become multicellular. But it it did not take long just to start. Yeah, what do you think is the hardest thing on the chain of leaps that got to humans? I would say multicellularity, which is strictly an energy problem, I, I think. Again, it's just like, can electrons flow the right way? Uh, and is it energetically favorable for multicellularity? to exist, because if it's energetically expensive, it's not going to succeed. And if it's energetically favorable, it's going to take off. It's really just, and that's why I also think that going from inanimate um, to animate is probably gray. Like the transition is gray. At what point we call something fully alive, famously, it's hard to make a nice list of bullet points that need to be met in order to declare something alive. Is a virus alive? I mean, I don't know. Is a prion alive? Those are, they seem to do some things, but they kind of rely on stealing 
other DNA and replicating and I don't know, I guess they're not alive. But I mean, the point is, is that it really, at the end of the day, I really think it's just, you asked if it's just physics. I mean, I think it's just this, these rules of energetics. And the gray area between the non-living and the living is way simpler just on Earth. And you said it's already complicated on Earth, but it's probably even more complicated elsewhere where the chemistry could be anything. Carbon is really cool and really useful yes, because nice. it finds a lot. It's nice. <laughs> it finds a lot of ways to combine with other things. And that's complexity. And complexity is the kind of thing you need for life. You can't have a very simple linear chain and expect to get life. But I don't know. Maybe sulfur would do okay. 